Hi, this is Brian Klug with Anontech, and what we're looking at right now is the HTC Sensation. Um, so obviously the HTC Sensation we're looking at um, is the T-Mobile version, because uh, it has T-Mobile written at the top, but this is essentially the same as the uh, the version that's launched internationally already. Um, so of course, this is the first uh, dual-core Snapdragon smartphone from HTC. Uh, it was followed up shortly by the Evo 3D, uh, which Anand is going over pretty soon. Um, so obviously at the core of this phone is an MSM8260, so that's the dual core 45 nanometer Snapdragon uh, with the Adreno 220 graphics, uh, and there's 768 megabytes of LPDDR2 RAM uh, in addition. So before we get into all those details, um, which are pretty exciting, I think there's a number of other exciting things about the physical design of the Sensation, um, starting with you know the unibody construction, which um, if you're familiar with the sensation, there's no way you could you can't have heard about already. Um, so looking at the actual device, you can see that it's sort of got this metal piece uh, which goes all the way across the back um, and continues around here and on the edges and the lip. So this is one contiguous metal piece, um, and that's what HTC means when it says unibody. Um, so they're they're kind of going for that that sort of you know the prestige of it being machined out of one piece of uh, metal. Uh, and if you've ever seen the Nexus One or the Desire HD or the Desire, uh, this is sort of that same same exact metal. Uh, it's a, it's kind of got like a purple purple cast in some lights, and it looks gray uh, in others. And it's got a nice sort of matte feel that they've obviously done some powder coating on. Um, and overall, it's just a really nice nice phone to hold because of this metal. Um, so then there are two plastic parts, um, uh, and these are discrete. Uh, and that's that's sort of not not you know something out of the ordinary for HTC to do. It's the same sort of plastic again as the Nexus One uh, and as the Desire HD. But again, what's different here is that it's one piece of metal. Um, so the next part is obviously how do you get the phone out? So there's not so much a battery case or a battery cover on the Sensation as there is um, a way to sort of take the phone out of its exoskeleton, as I call it. Um, so there's this little tab here. Um, which is spring-loaded, that you can press in. And then the phone sort of pops out a little bit, like this. So it, it lifts out, um, and because this part is kind of hooked over, you then pull, pull it out. Um, so you have this one big metal piece uh, that sort of serves as the battery cover and the whole case, and sort of the phone's primary structural element. Uh, as well as a place for all the antennas to be, which are, of course, what these gold contacts are for. Um, and then you have the actual guts of the phone. And this is this is plastic. I'm sure there's metal inside, um, but everything on the outside is plastic. Um, so you can obviously see where those gold contacts meet up uh, inside. So I think HTC deserves a lot of credit for you know doing something interesting with antennas. Uh, I know that's sort of been our obsession lately, uh, but. You know, it's just interesting to note that not only Apple isn't the only one, you know, experimenting with uh, different industrial design and getting around RF constraints. Um, and of course, these plastic parts are where the things are patterned on. So they're RF windows, but they're also sort of decorative. Um, and to me, I can kind of see like where the pyramid code name came from. I mean, it's got this angular, angular sort of design. If you had a second one over here mirrored, it would sort of make a pyramid. Uh, maybe I'm reading into that too much, but oh well. So of course you have the 8 megapixel camera, um, dual LED flash. Interesting note about the camera, this is actually the same uh, Samsung CMOS sensor as what was used in the Desire HD. Uh, it's not the same as what was in the Thunderbolt. Um, so if you like the way the Desire HD captured photos, um, or of course the Inspire 4G here in the United States, it's going to be really similar um, on this device. Um, uh, maybe a little bit better because of the different ISP, of course, image signal processing uh, on the um, MSM8260, uh, which I'm told has seen some improvements. Um, so, of course, you have the battery, 5.62 watt hours, I believe. Um, yeah, 5.62 watt hours. Uh, SIM slot, you still can't get to the SIM slot uh, without first removing the battery. Uh, and that's that's a little bit annoying. I know a lot of people like to do hot SIM swaps. Uh, that's something you can do on the Samsung devices, even if if you sort of lie to it and say cancel after it says you need to reboot. Uh, the baseband will work. Uh, I haven't experimented with trying to get this out without the battery, but you basically need to take the battery out. 
Of course, you don't need to take the battery out to swap the uh, micro SD card um, since it's right here. Uh, and T-Mobile, at least on this T-Mobile version of Sensation, you get an 8GB Class 4 micro SD. Um, so I think that's a little bit on the small side. We're starting to see phones with 32 gigabytes. Uh, you know, obviously Verizon on its flagship devices is, is starting to ship 32 gigabytes. Um, but 8 gigabytes is more than adequate if you get Class 4. Um, one of the nice things about the Sensation as well that I've been harping on about other HTC phones is that the camera module doesn't have a piece of plastic in front of it. So on this part, you can see they have like a little um, rubber slash foam seal. So you don't get dirt inside from the camera because, of course, that's that's really the um, the largest hole other than the the, the LED flashes. Um, but as a result, there's no there's no other optical element in front. So when you stick this thing back together, this really is the first surface of the camera. Uh, so there's no longer a place for dirt to get, which was a big complaint of mine with the Nexus One because that was if you got a fingerprint on the inside right here, um, that would always just be something that added glare and scatter. Uh, so that that was a problem, but that's fixed now. They've obviously listened. Um, so yeah, let's put the thing back together. Um, so of course, slides in like this, and of course on the front is where you have the uh, VGA front-facing camera, the LED, you know, for notifications, and the speaker. Uh, and you can you can really you know it's kind of nice to look at all the guts over here. You know, you can it's a little bit semi-transparent, so you can sort of see if you're if you're into that sort of thing. Um, so this slides in like this again, and then it, you push down here, so it sort of snaps together and at this point it's it's really sturdy um, doesn't move around a lot inside. The only complaint that I have is that right at the top here uh, there's a tiny little bit of a gap I don't know if you, it's not going to expose now, uh, of course because the phone is turned on, but there's just a small enough gap at the top here that you can get dirt inside, so some pocket lint does get um, in there. And that, that sometimes is annoying, uh, but it's, it's nothing that really has affected you know, the front-facing camera yet that I've seen um, in a very considerable manner. So while we're talking about the front, uh, let's mention the fact that the, uh, the screen is actually an interesting design element, uh, and it's something unique. So there's been kind of an obsession of late of doing uh, things like cutting glass, making special shapes. Uh, and if you look at the reflection here, you can see that HTC has done something as well. So this front, this front surface is sort of concave. So out at the edges, it's raised by just a little bit, uh, and that's everywhere. You can see it run along along every edge. Um, so as a result, if you lay the phone down like this, uh, you won't scratch it. So I can put on the on the surface and move it around. Um, generally, that's something that if you ever had a, a smartphone you know which is just like the end of the world because now the thing is scratched um, but on here really the only surface that's coplanar with the table is this metal part around um, so as a result you don't really need to worry too much about scratching it uh, at least on totally flat surfaces that don't have things sticking up so obviously like rocks if it lands face down you know it's still going to be scratched so now that we've actually gone over the uh, sensation in detail let's go over how it physically compares to uh, some other smartphones so what I have in front of the uh, camera right now is the sensation on the far left, uh, the Inspire 4G, or basically the Desire HD in the middle, uh, and then my Nexus One on the right. <clears throat> so you can you can sort of see how you know things have gone. Uh, of course, the screens have gotten larger over time. You know, if we're talking, uh, you know, sort of a progression. I think it's kind of an interesting analogy um, to the way the cars are getting a little bit fatter, but. That's for another day. <clears throat> Anyways, you can see that you know, sort of the metal that they've used is is sort of the same uh, on all three. And this this plastic, which is sort of you know got a Teflon feel to it, you know, it doesn't really show fingerprints or grease. Uh, it's sort of continued across all three. Um, and to me, really, the sensation feels a lot like a grown-up Nexus One. You know, when I look at the two, it's sort of got the same shape. You know, um, just by virtue of I guess similar aspect ratio display. Um, but really just in the hand, this, this metal part here, you know, sort of comes along my pinky and this, you know, this finger, uh, and it's sort of the same way that this metal does. Um, and as a result, they just have great in-hand feel. Uh, so if we look at thickness, I think it's another important thing to look at. Let's turn that one off. You know, you can sort of see that thickness has sort of stayed about the same. 
Uh, the Desire HD is, looks a little bit fatter because of its camera that kind of pops out on the back. So I know this is the latest obsession is how, how thin we can get devices. You know, if we take a look at sort of the, um, the Samsung and Fuse 4G, you know, that's a really thin phone. Um, probably the in most poignant comparison if you're on T-Mobile for the sensation is how it compares uh, to the G2X. I have the Optimus 2X here. Um, so side by side, you can see the sensation is definitely a bigger phone. Uh, you know, but it's not, not by too much when you look at things. Um, you can sort of see side by side, face up. You get a bigger display on the sensation. And you know, sort of the same package area. Uh, although, you know, it is, it is a little bit larger. Um, and in terms of thickness, you know, about the same. There's nothing too substantial there. Um, so yeah, again, the G2X is on T-Mobile. This is the Optimus 2X uh, running CM7, but it's, you know, essentially the same thing. Uh, and then one last thing, we have the volume buttons on this side, the sensation. Uh, of course, the uh, micro USB slot. Uh, which also has MH MHL support, so you can do HDMI with the dongle. Um, then up at the top, your standard headset jack, power button, uh, which is a little bit hard to find sometimes. It's a little bit inset, doesn't stick out too much. Um, down at the bottom, microphone. Uh, you know, their, their speaker phone back here. Uh, microphones. You know, there's probably, I think there's one more for noise cancellation. Um, and the sensation actually shoots video and stereo sound as well. So obviously there's a second one somewhere. Um, but I think I think that's pretty much the physical comparisons. Again, you know, you can sort of see that it's built on the you know the same sort of industrial design as Vivek would put it between the uh, you know the rest of HTC's catalog.